Oh, there we are. Hi, my name is Andreas, and I'm here to talk to you about PVA, uh, PWA, uh, farewell to apps. Uh, I'm usually a uh, front-end lead at one of the major IT projects in Norway, but there I write React. But now I'm just going to talk about progressive web apps. So if you were here earlier today, you had a bit of introduction to what progressive ab web apps are. They are really, they should have been like the 2017 like front end, like yay! Didn't really happen, sort of happened, but not really. So a progressive web app, you've probably heard about it. It's a website. Yeah! Crowd goes, yay, it's a website, everyone. So in 2018, it's kind of hard to get excited for websites, but that's all it is. It's a website with some bells and whistles, but it's at its core, it's just a website. It's a website that you can install as an app, and this is a major issue, because people at once, when you say that, that it's installable with a click, then everyone, oh, it's an app, and then they have to compare it to native apps, the ones that you have on your phone. And there are a lot of things that doesn't really include installing things on a progressive web app. There is so much more to it. And if you go down this road, well, let's say it's Flame War Central, so let's not go there. Let's just focus on what makes a progressive web app so great. Because it is great, and it's something that we should do. If you're a front-end developer, and you're not building a progressive web app, this is what you're missing out on. You get, by building a progressive web app, you get caching, you can access the data offline, you, it's automatically secure, there is more user interaction than if you have regular mobile web. This has been proven time and time again. You reach a lot more people. You can benchmark your site. You can have actual numbers to how accessible it is how search engine optimized it is, and how quickly uh, it is drawn on the screen. You can use push notifications to re-engage the user. You can use background sync so that if someone is doing something on your site offline and then goes online, it persists somewhere later on. And of course, then there are the three parts that are about the app. It enables you to, with one click, install your uh, website to your mobile device. Um, you can use a lot of features that are on your mobile device, and it has an app-like feel. But these are just a few points, and there are a lot of things that doesn't have to do with just installing it. But the two core technologies with progressive web apps is the service worker and the manifest. The manifest is the same as when you are doing regular native development. It just tells you if it's going to be portrait or landscape, if you're going to use icons, if you're going to have a splash screen. And the service worker is just a JavaScript thread that lies in the background. It's like, oh, I'm listening for stuff. Oh, so you want to have a fetch request. Well, let me see if I'm offline or online, and then I'll pass you the cache data or I pass you live data. I'll probably tell you something about it as well. So these are the two core, and it's really, really easy to write. It takes like a minute to write each of these, and then you're good to go. So it's easy to get into. So if you break it down, you have progressive web app. And the progressive part, as a web developer, you probably think, oh, that's like responsiveness, right? It's like adjusting depending on which screen size you have. So the site's going to look different. And yeah, that is a part of it. And today we have a really nifty tool that was the big 2017 woohoo, And this is the CSS grid, which was talked about earlier today as well. It allows you to like actually just tell you how to make your site. It's like, OK, I'm going to have navigation here, and I'm going to have this area here. There will be in content, and this will be a sidebar. And then you can write it in words. And then when you shrink the screen, you can just take one of these and throw it away. Or you can swap their places, and everything just falls into place. It's beautiful. So if you haven't tried CSS Grid, you definitely should. But progressive means so much more. 
It's about functionality. And this is a major, major point, I believe anyway, that you should make your site tailor-made for each and every one of your users. It doesn't matter if they're on desktop, if they're on a tablet, if they're on a mobile phone. They should have the best possible experience that they can have on their device. And this is where progressive web apps shine. Because it's not just about how it looks, it's about how it works. And a site you can go to on your phone, it's a PWA, is what web can do today. And then you'll have a list of every single thing natively that you can do on your with web technologies. And if you want to go into, like, I want to capture video, you can just click this link and it'll give you an API. And this is for Chrome on mobile. As you can see, there are a lot of green check marks. That means that it is available through JavaScript, CSS, HTML. You can access, access these. iOS, not so much. There are a lot of red crosses on iOS. But iOS has included Service Worker and Manifest. So things are looking up. There will be improvements. But the whole progressive part is that, OK, so I want to use the camera. I want the user to be able to take a picture. Oh, you didn't have a camera. That's too bad. Maybe you can just upload a picture through an image picker. Oh, you don't have access to an image picker? Really? Well, if that's the case, maybe you can choose between two avatars instead and just pick one of those. So the progressive part is giving the user the best experience they can get on their selected device. And one thing I want you to remember, if you hate my talk and don't ever want to hear about progressive web apps ever again, then this is it. Oops. Lighthouse. If you use this when you're doing web development, you're doing things right. Lighthouse gives you a number between 1 and 100 on performance, accessibility, search engine optimization, best practices, progressive web app as well. And if you have a low score, you can just click the link below, and it will tell you exactly what you need to do to fix it. So if you have a website, and you go into Chrome Developer Tools, Open Audit, and then you run Lighthouse, you are making a better site, and you can do it step by step. It's, it's great. You should do it. Uh, so the second part about progressive web app is, of course, web. And we have at our disposal, as web developers, a huge reach. We have the internet. It's the biggest arena there is. And it's much bigger than, well, everything, anything you can think of. And I want you to think of progressive web apps as not these apps thing. I want you to think of it as the next logical step in the web evolution, or webolution, if you like. And if you look at it, Back in 2007, the iPhone came along in 2008, Android. And that sort of split the development tree. So you have uh, development for desktop, and then the native uh, applications that like, took over the, uh, and then you have the PVA somewhere in the middle. It's been around since 2011, at least. And I do believe that if you're doing mobile web, then it's natural for you to adapt the progressive web thinking, because it gives you so much more. But you shouldn't forget about native either, because today, native mo uh, mobile web is bigger than the desktop one. More people are accessing the World Wide Web through the mobile devices than they are on the desktop. So what does this mean, really? Well, we have different platforms. We have the iOS. It's about this big. We have Android. It's about that big. And we have the desktop, which is about this big. And native developers, they kind of focus in on building one code base to take care of these two now. You have Submarine, you have Cordova, you have PhoneGap, you have like Flutter somewhere in between. But as if you're building a progressive web app, then you're including everything. You don't exclude anything. Everyone should be able to use your uh, website. So one code base for everything. 
And of course, if you're not convinced yet, then all the cool kids are doing it. Yeah, Financial Times have been doing it since 2011. Um, Tinder, Alibaba, biggest tech company in China. Uh, what more do we have? We have like Washington Post, Forbes. They actually made a video about three minutes about how cool their PWA is. It's, it's true, it's like I spent fortunes on making a video about it. Um, Virgin, Microsoft Teams, Uber, and Twitter. They're all doing PWAs. So it is a big thing. But, and this is what you get. So it's already included in Vue and in React and Angular 6. Just fire it up and you'll have a PWA. But still, even though you get all these goodies, the response from the community last year was like, eh, do we really need that? Can't we just do what we've always done? And I think that it has to do with, I've spoken to a lot of people about this, at least five. And we're kind of in agreement that it's about this. It's about this is what I expect from a mobile device. But in two weeks later, it's like this. It's the last part of progressive web app. It's the apps that is the problem. Because people are focusing on the app and not on the progressive web. And this is a huge issue. If you saw the iOS conference from two weeks ago, the keynote was about apps, and it was how bad apps are for you. You should limit your app use. Don't use apps. They actually have a new uh, part of their iOS that's called App Limit. They just tell you that you're using your apps too much. Don't do it. So when you think about progressive, when you find yourself looking at progressive web apps, just don't focus so much on the app part, because there will be places for native apps in the future as well but see it as the continuation of the web evolution. So I think it's time to say farewell to apps and just say hello to progressive web development. Thank you. <laughs>